Welcome to this course and this course is called Getting Started in SQL Server and it's for people who have never used a SQL Server before for them to get started in the SQL Server so it will show the basics of downloading and installing SQL Server and we will go through some basic SQL Server commands for you to get started in. After this we will show you a training path on what you can do next after you've finished this course. So this course is for people who have never used SQL Server before or want to get started in SQL Server. I hope you enjoy the course and let's continue. Hello and for this section of the course what I will do I will download SQL Server and install it onto this operating system. If you just follow what I do you should be fine. So what you need to do is first open up your favourite web browser and search engine. So I'll do that here. And I'll just go to Google. And next I will type in SQL Server Download. and press enter and I'll go to SQL Server downloads and click on this and this should take me to Microsoft website for SQL Server any second now and on here it will show you um, all the different types of offering offerings from Microsoft about SQL Server and we just go down here you've got like a developer and express um, developer is like the full scale version of SQL Server and um, SQL Server comes in many different editions um, once Express, Developer, Standard, Enterprise like the, the higher end like Standard and Enterprise you have to pay for and it costs like thousands or hundreds and thousands of pounds to um, use these in a production environment but with Developer you can download this for free and you can use this to develop your skills in SQL Server or to or develop something or test things out in, in, a, in a test environment and Express is also free as well um, but it's a it's, it's, it's like a cut down version of of SQL that you can use for development and you can also use this in production you can't use developer in a production environment so you can only use this for like testing things out or to just develop your skills so what we'll do is download SQL Server developer edition um, it doesn't really matter which year you download just make sure you get the, the latest one um, as this is just a introductory type of course for SQL Server it doesn't really matter which version of developer edition you download so at the time of me doing this course SQL Server 2017 is the latest version so but you might be using a different developer version depending when you when you get to watch this so I'll download it now I click in the download button so on here now at the bottom of the screen on, on this particular version of, of my web browser I can just save it so I'll just save it and it shouldn't take that long four more seconds to go it's pretty quick usually and once that is done the next thing to do is well, after it's done the security scan of the file just press the run button and this is part it's just in, it's, is um, just like a pre-installation of SQL Server um, so you got three options basic custom and download media um, basic is just a very basic installation of the SQL Server um, custom you can actually pick and choose what you want to install and download media is for when you want to just download the media and um, install them later on a, on a different um, system or a different server or PC 
so you can like put it like download onto like a USB drive take it onto USB drive and install it somewhere else um, what we'll do we will do a custom install so I click on custom and that's this is just uh, where you want um, the media to download to so it will create this folder and I put install make sure you've got enough um, space press install and this will just um, take a while to download the install package um, this looks like it's going to take a while so what I will do I'll just pause the video here and start it again once the download is complete So now SQL Server has been downloaded, you are now ready to install SQL Server. And the, the way you do this is to click on the installation tab and click new service standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. So you just click on this and it will open up another window. And then with this window, you can select more options on how to install SQL Server. So with this screen, you just click on Developer and click Next. Um, accept the license terms and conditions. If, if you want to read all that, not many people do, but if you want to read it, you can read it. And after this, it's up to you to, if you want to click this Microsoft Update to check updates. For this example, I'm just going to leave this off, and now it's going to do some more tests. It's just test to see if it's possible to install SQL Server. If if you if you get any fails on here, just look on one of these. Just click on one of these, and it will tell you what you need to do to to get past the fail and that's just a warning it's fine so for this one you can you can press next after you've got all the pasts or at least all passes and then you can have a warning and here what we're going to do is click on the database engine service and what else do we need and um, for this example for this test um, for this course um, you can click client tools connectivity and that's it we should be fine with that and click next you can you can change your direction but I'm just gonna leave my defaults where where to install the software here and on the next screen so for this you've got two choices default and named um, later on in more advanced courses we, will, we can go through what's the difference between default and named instance but for this course just stick to the defaults so I'll just click next um, it's, it's waiting then on this screen, um, press next again. On this screen, press add current user, which is you should be yourself. Oh, yeah, it's going there. It took its time, but we got there in the end. Um, just leave it on Windows Authentication mode and just make sure you click this Add Current User and it'll see the screen looks a bit like this. And press Next. And press Install. So this is going to install SQL Server and what I'll do, I'll pause this video and come back to you once it's done. So now that it's installed, and we can press close here, and 
that and I need to close this window and the next thing that we need to do is download a thing called SQL Server Management Studio so really this is like a front end for you to connect and do lots of development and administration on SQL Server using this front end tool so what you need to do is click on the install SQL Server Management Tools and also open up on, on your in your browser and what you need to do is just click on this um, whatever downloads available to you at this time click on the latest one so I'm going to download this download SQL Server Management Tools 17.91 it might be a different version what you did, what you have but this is the, the latest version for me so I'll just click on this I'll save this it's going to take three minutes I'll just see um yep it's going to take four minutes now so what i'll do again i'll pause this video and once it's downloaded i will come back and we'll go through installing this as well so now it's downloaded you now have the ability to install um this front end so that you can connect to sql server so on my browser i can click the run button run button so if you've got a run button just click on that then this screen should appear and just click install um this shouldn't take this that long um just going through some basic um installation stuff that microsoft like to do so i can tell this is not going to take that long um, after this installed, I'll give you a quick tour around SQL Server Management Studio. Now that it's installed, I will just take you on a quick tour around SQL Server Management Studio. So you just press this close button and close this as well. And if you go to your start um, button and if you click on this SQL Server, server or whatever edition you have got and you'll see um, so Microsoft SQL Server tools and in there you will see SQL, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio so if you click on this and you'll see the splash screen any second now shouldn't actually take this long I, th I think it should take about, about 10 more seconds 10, 9, 8, 7 a oh, bit, bit quicker than that and server name is the name of your PC my PC is called Wayne and this long number so this is the name of my server and Windows Authentication is um you your login name so on this screen just press connect and this is sql server management studio and um, with this tool you are able to look at different databases set security on your database create tables insert information to tables do some diagnostics um it could do it can do practically most everything my most stuff from this tool and we will go through all the different well a lot of the different sections of 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 of, of how to navigate around um sql server management studio during this course but for this point of the course it's just good enough for you to download SQL Server and install SQL Server and get to this point and the next section we'll start to delve into doing something with SQL Server that is like inserting data finding data creating databases and things like that so this is the end of this section and I look forward to you starting the next section For this lecture, I will talk about what is a database and why do we need them. 
Many years ago, the only way to store information in a secure place was by using a filing cabinet. This was because you could put the filing cabinet in a secure room with limited access to people who were allowed to read the information. Then you would put the information in a filing cabinet that also had a lock. This way, if someone gained access to the secure room, they would need another key to get inside the filing cabinet. Fast forward to today. The same principles apply to database systems where you need special access to the server, then you will need access to the database to view the information. A database is just a modern version of a filing cabinet that is located within a computer. And the advantages are that you can find, delete and update your information quicker than compared to a paper-based filing cabinet. Most companies in the world will use a database to store information and devices that you already use will also contain a database. You probably already use a database on your phone, TV and other electronic devices and you don't even realise you're using them. So now you understand what a database is, I'll talk about tables in the next lecture. So, what is a table? A table is where you store information that you gather from a source. Tables are very similar to an Excel spreadsheet where you would have columns and rows. You would insert information into the table like a spreadsheet and save the data. But instead of saving the data to a file, you would save it within the database. To make a row in the table uniquely identifiable, you would add a primary key. With the primary key, you will be able to search the table to find the correct entry by knowing the primary key value that you want. Columns are defined by its data type, so you can have numeric, text-based and date type columns to store your data. Using the correct data type helps with the validation of the data to be stored. So that is a basic explanation of what a table is. For this lecture, I will show you how to create the test database with test data inside. So the only thing you need to do is go to the left hand side and right click databases, then click new database, then type in test database, then press OK. Then the next thing you need to do is download the setup underscore create a database file which is contained in this lecture as a resource and once it's downloaded is just file open and go to file here and find a file that you just downloaded from the resource and open it up into management studio. Once it's open it will look something like this. Then the other thing you need to do after that is press the execute button and it will create all the test data for you and your screen should look like this. Once you've done that, you can proceed on to the next lecture. For this lecture, I will talk about the select statement and we will be talking about two clauses of the select statement and that is the where clause and the order by clause. So the where clause is used to filter out things that you do need or you don't need. So if you wanted to know, for example, from this table, you want to know all the employees where the employee ID is two, you can do that by using the where clause. So if I wanted to do this, and find out where all the employees IDs are to. I'll type in from this select statement where employee ID equals two and press execute. And as you can see, I've got one employee where the ID is two. If I wanted to do by the first name so what I'll do now I'll bring all the table back by highlighting the first section of this select statement I did that by holding on the right sorry the left 
mouse button and highlighting it, I'm just dragging it across and pressing execute, and that will bring everybody back. If I was to do all of it, I'll just get the two. If there's some of it, I'll get everybody. So if I wanted all the employees were the first name is Imran. I'll just change this to first name and change the variable to Imran and press execute and it will bring back the employee. So again I'll bring back everybody back again and another thing that you can do is filter by um, a numeric value so it, like a greater than or less than value so for example if I wanted to find all the employees who are older than 30 I can just type in age where age is greater than 30 and press execute and it'll bring back these two employees because the first employee, if you if I if I bring everybody back, is only 28. So that is the work clause, and you you can experiment by doing things by changing that to a, a less than, and it could bring back just that one employee. Um, do this clause that we're going to look at is the order by clause so if you wanted to order this list by the salary so if I put order by salary in in this order 40,000, 60,000, 70,000 if I wanted to do it by descending order I to put desk and it do the other way around 70, 60, 70,000, 60,000, 40,000, and the default is asynchronous, but you don't really have to put ASE as you can see. It's, 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 it's the, the default option anyway. So you can just type in order by and column name, and that is the order by statement. For this lecture, I will show you how to use the union command. The union command is used to join two identical structured result sets together. When I mean structured result sets, I mean the exact amount of columns in both result sets. So for example, I've got this result set here, and that brings back three records with these five columns. And I've got another result set, that brings back one row with the exact same five columns. So if I wanted to join these two result sets together, the only thing I need to do is type in the word union between them both, and this will bring back both result sets and it will also remove any duplications. If you want the result set to bring back any duplicate rows, the only thing you need to do is type in the word all after the word union and press the execute button and as you can see it has brought back four result sets now with the duplicates showing so in conclusion the union brings back two identical structured result sets into one result set and you have a choice of bringing back with or without duplication for this lecture i will show you how to use the date functions in SQL. I will go through some of the most popular date functions that you will use and for this I will start by getting today's date and as you can see today's date is the 28th of April 2019. If I wanted to add one day onto this date I can use the date add function and the syntax for the date add function is date add open bracket the interval that you want to add how many days you want to add and the actual variable what you're going to pass into this function 
if I was to run this, it has added one day on to today's date. So you can see it now says the 29th of April. And if I want to take one day off and run it, as you can see, it is now the 27th of April. So in the date add function, the D is telling you what the interval is going to be. So for example, D means day and M means month. So if I wanted to take one month off, as you can see, it's now the 3rd of March, um, two months. Now, now it's saying February. And if I was to change this to years, if I type in years like that, and take off one year, and run it, as you can see, it's 2018. If I was to take off 10 years, it's 2009. So that is how you add and subtract years from today's date or a date that you'd pass it into this date add function. If you wanted to only show a part of the date, so today's date is the 28th of April and you only wanted to know from that result set what is the month, you can by running this command or this function called date part function. And from this result set, you can see it is showing four because it's April and it's a fourth month of the year. If I want to only show the day, I'd run or change the M to a D and now it's showing 28. If I only wanted to see the year and execute that, it is showing the year. There is also a different way I could have done this by using the month function. So as you can see, I've got a month open bracket here. And if I execute that, it is showing the month. If I execute the year function, it's showing the year. So these five, of five different methods of splitting apart a date to give you the only information that you desire. So if you only wanted the month, the day, the year, um, you can use one of these functions. Another way of splitting up the date is by using date name. So for example, if I run this, this is showing that it's a Sunday because it's showing the name of the date. And if I were to put in a month, like for example, in this query, it is showing April, it's showing the name of the date. So if you want to find out the name of the date, you use the function date name. And one more example of how you can manipulate the date is using date diff. Date diff calculates the difference between two dates. So here I have got an interval of D, which stands for day. I've got one date here, the 1st of January, 2019. And I've got another date value, the 10th of January, 2019. So this command will calculate the day's difference between the 1st of January and the 10th of January. So these commands are the most popular type of date functions that you will use in SQL. For this lecture, I will talk about what it means to be a database administrator. So to become a database administrator, you have to make sure that you look after the security of the database, that the database is performing efficiently, and making sure that the backups and restore process of the databases are working. So there are many tools what can help do this. So in this demo, I'll just go through them really, really quickly. So with the databases, you have to make sure that it's set up correctly 
and that's by looking in the properties of each database and selecting the right configurations. Um, with the server, you have to right click on the properties again and, and click the right settings, like the right amount of memory to set for the server. Um, any advanced features you have to enable or disable. You also have to make sure that um, the databases are running correctly. Um, so you do look at a database backup and the restore process in this sub menu. And you can also make um, sure that there are no unforeseen errors in the SQL Server instance. So you ch you'll check the error logs by clicking on one of these error um, log listings here. Um, also, you have to make sure that it's performing correctly. So you'd go into each table and you would put indexes on the table and rebuild the indexes. And you can also, with being a SQL Server database administrator, make sure that if, if you've got any jobs running and a job is a process that you can run or schedule at a convenient time. So it's just to make sure that any, if any jobs are running that they are working correctly and it sends out the proper error messages out to the relevant people that if it works or if it fails. So there were many tasks being a database administrator. So I would say that you have to make sure that that um, you rebuild all the indexes and the, and the server and the database are performing correctly, making sure that the backup and restore process is working and looking after the security of the server. In my SQL Server Bootcamp course, I will go through how to do this in more detail. But for this demo, I've just gone through the different types of options that there are and what you need to learn and to become a SQL Server Database Administrator. A, a SQL Server Database Administrator is a lot different than being a SQL Server Developer because a SQL Server Developer will know, you would have to know more T-SQL, how to use SSIS and Power BI. A database administrator is more to do the back end on how the, the server is performing and how how secure the database and server is. So that's around about it. This is a quick overview of what it means to be a SQL Server database administrator. For this lecture, I will show you what Power BI is and how it can be linked onto SQL Server. So Power BI is a reporting tool that you can link onto SQL Server. So in this example, I will link onto SQL Server to retrieve basic information and put it into a graphical report. So I'll go through this quickly. So what I will do, I'll just get some data from SQL Server and get some test data. I'll just pick the employees table and press load. So that's imported data from out of SQL Server into Power BI. And on the right hand side, you can see some um, columns from the imported data, first name, last name, salary, and other things there. So if I was to click on the first name and the last name, it appears onto this canvas. So I can drag this canvas around, put it into the middle and add other things as well. And I can also resize this. And over here are some visualizations where I can change this into show different um, um, graphical visualizations. In the SQL Server Bootcamp course, I'll go through more advanced features of Power BI and how you can link SQL Server onto Power BI and create better visualizations, how to filter data, how to do custom formatting, and how to produce um, useful reports for people. So again, this is a SQL Server Bootcamp course. If you go straight off to there, it'll give you a better overview on how to use Power BI. But for basics, um, I've just shown you a really easy way of importing data from SQL Server and creating your own reports. 
For this lecture, I'm going to show you how to create a SQL Server database within AWS. So I'm going to create a basic um, SQL database by using RDS. So I will click on this RDS link here. Then once the screen appears, I will click on the Create Database um, tab here. Then on the screen, I have a choice of different types of engine types. I will click on the SQL Server. Then I'll click on the Express and um, I'll just make it a free one. Then this is just um, like the database instance name. So I'm just going to keep it as default. I will give it um, a, a password. Then I will just keep with all the defaults and press create database. Then at this moment in time, SQL Server is being created. That is how easy it is to create a SQL Server Express Edition database. So if you want to learn a bit more on different types of settings that you can do, you can join my SQL Server Bootcamp course and we will go through on all the different types of ways to create SQL Server and linking it from your desktop onto SQL Server and go through SQL Server security settings on AWS and how to um, back up databases as well. So while this is creating, you can just pop along and join the course now. But that is how easy it is to create a SQL Server Express Edition database.